This is the installation video for the Z-axis brake on the Tormach 24R machines with the serial number of RA-10001 through RA-10096, which do not include a Z-axis brake. If your 24R has the serial number of RA-10097 and above, the Z-axis brake is pre-installed at the factory and you don't need to follow the procedures in this video. This video is not a replacement for the installation guide document. The most current versions are easily found through a search on the Tormach website. You must read through the current document for all the warnings, cautions, tour requirements, and any future changes. The Z-axis brake is required for the installation of the 24R ATC. You must perform this installation before starting to install the 24R ATC. Update Pathpilot. To start your installation of the 24R Z-axis brake, you must first update your PathPilot controller to the latest version. On the Status tab, select Update and follow the instructions to update to the most recent version. Find your machine serial number on the plaque installed on the side of the electrical cabinet. If your serial number is between RA-10085 and RA-10096, then jump to the chapter called Remove the Existing Z-Axis Brake. All the machines that fall within the serial numbers of RA-1001 and RA-1084, the installation can continue from here. Update wire 487 on the machine control board. Power on the 24R and Path Pilot controller by turning on the main disconnect switch to on. Twist out the machine's emergency stop button. Press the reset button. Bring the machine out of reset and reference it, starting with the Z axis, and then the X and Y axes. Jog the X axes to about 12 inches or the middle point of travel. Jog the Y axes to about 24 inches in the positive direction. Make sure there are no cutting tools in the spindle. Power off the machine in the PathPilot controller by pushing in the machine's emergency stop button. From PathPilot, select exit. Turn the main disconnect switch to off. Remove the power plug from the wall outlet. Follow the correct lockout tagout procedures. In the electrical cabinet on top of the machine control board, identify the J10 connector. Unplug the connector from the board, remove wire 488 and wire 487 from the connector with a small flat bladed screwdriver. Remove the necessary wire trough covers and trace the wires back to the terminal block strip. Disconnect wire 488 from the terminal block by inserting a flat blade screwdriver into the spring clamp and prying up to disconnect. Discard the wire. Connect the loose end of wire 487 to the positive 24 volt DC terminal by inserting it into the open port of the terminal block connected to wire 404. To open the port, insert a small flat bladed screwdriver into the spring clamp access hole, tilt the screwdriver up and insert the wire into the port. Remove the screwdriver and pull gently in the wire to check for a secure hold. Install the Z-axis brake cable. In this section of the install, you will need to remove the vacuum table off of the casting. So you will need an assistant and either saw horses or a solid work surface to temporarily hold the vacuum table while you work. Remove the M8 screws securing the vacuum table to the machine with a six millimeter hex wrench. Set the screws aside. From the end of the machine, Slide the vacuum table off of the casting and onto a solid surface with the help of an assistant. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. From the back of the gantry, remove the screws securing the lid to the rear of the Z-axis cover with a three millimeter hex wrench. Set the covers and screw aside. Remove the five M5 screws on the cable tray cover and the five screws from the cable cover on the side of the gantry. Set the screws and the covers aside. Find the 24R Z-axis brake cable assembly. Wrap the tips of the brake cable together with electrical tape. Starting at the rear Z-axis cover, you will need to remove about every other energy chain cover. To do this, insert a small flat bladed screwdriver into the left rectangle opening and pry up, then pry up on the right side. The cover can then be lifted and set aside. The covers on the top and the bottom of the energy chain are different sizes. Keep them separated for reinstallation. Begin routing the brake cable through the x-axis energy chain.
you can replace the energy chain covers by sliding them back into place. Then with your thumbs along the bottom, snap the bottom in and then tip it up and forward to snap the top in. Once you get a few in, the others will be easy. Remember that the covers on the bottom are shorter than the top. Once the cable is through the energy chain, it can be routed down the side of the gantry. Route the cable through the cable tray on the bottom of the gantry and into the energy chain closest to the electrical cabinet. The covers on this energy chain are more difficult to remove. You may need to purchase a short, small, flat-bladed screwdriver. We were able to route the cable through by only removing six of these covers. Once the cable is through this energy chain, replace the covers by snapping them back into place. Then route the cable into the hole to your left and into the electrical cabinet. Remove the wire troughs by pulling them off the retaining clips. Make electrical connections. Route the 509 and 510 wires through the J10 connector and then unwrap them. Secure wire 509 to pin 2 on the J10 connector with a small flat bladed screwdriver. and then reseat the J10 connector. To connect wires to the power supply, it needs to be removed from the bracket. The security pin is on the underside. Use a flat bladed screwdriver to release it from the bracket. Then connect wire 510 to the empty negative volt terminal on the power supply with a small flat bladed screwdriver. Reseat the power supply onto the bracket and reseat the security pin. Reinstall the wire troughs. Remove the Z-axis motor. If you've just joined us here, that means you have a machine with the serial numbers between RA10085 and RA10096. If you haven't yet done so, you must first power off the machine and the path pilot controller. Start by pushing the machine's emergency stop button. From path pilot, select exit. Turn the main disconnect switch to off. Remove the power plug from the wall outlet. Follow the correct lockout tagout procedures. Locate the Z-axis motor power connector in the rear of the Z-axis cover and disconnect it. From the Z-axis motor, remove the four M6 screws securing it in place with the four millimeter hex wrench. Set the screws aside. Locate the Z-Motor Coupler. Since the coupler screw might be facing the rear and you won't have access to it, slide a 4-foot board under the spindle head. And since the power is off, you can gently lift it until the screw is facing the front. Slide a shim underneath the board to keep it in place. Loosen the screw securing the coupler to the Z-axis motor shaft with a 4mm hex wrench. Lift and remove the Z-axis motor and discard it or use it for another project. Find the Z-axis motor with a Z-brake. With the motor wires facing the back of the machine, slip the motor shaft onto the coupler and set the motor on top of the Z-axis motor mount. Tighten the coupler onto the shaft of the motor with a four millimeter hex wrench. Verify the Z-axis brake's manual override lever is slid to the left and in the engage position. Secure the Z-axis motor to the motor mount with the four M6 screws from the previous step. Identify the Z-axis motor power connector in the rear Z-axis cover and connect it to the motor. Connect the Z-axis brake cable to the Z-axis motor's brake connector. Remove the boards from under the spindle. Then with your assistant, reinstall the vacuum table. <laughs> Resecure it with the screws you removed earlier, and then reinstall the rear Z axis cover. Verify the installation. Turn the main disconnect switch to on. In the electrical cabinet, examine the axis motor drives to determine if the green LEDs are illuminated. If the green LEDs are on, then power off the machine and go to the troubleshooting section of the installation guide and then follow the steps for troubleshooting the e-stop circuit. If the green LEDs are off, then twist out the e-stop button 
and check if the reset button is illuminated. If the reset button is on, then power off the machine and go to the troubleshooting section in the installation guide. If the blue LED is off, then press the reset button. Click on reset in PathPilot. Then you can reference a machine starting with the Z axis and then X and Y. If the Z axis motor sounds different from the others, continue on to the troubleshooting section. If the Z axis motor operates smoothly and sounds like the other two, then you've successfully completed the installation of the Z axis brake. As always, thank you very much for watching.